There's a recent report in Renew Economy says, that says 116 new oil and gas projects in combination with coal mines and coal projects are being or about to be built in Australia or off Australian waters. It claims that these projects would create more CO2 than what Australia creates currently. In fact, they would triple Australia's CO2 emission, crippling the world's goal to actually get to net zero. Is this report true? Well, some people have said it's false. They've said it's fake. Can't be true. Australia wouldn't do this, would they? Would they? Would they? Well, maybe they would. Maybe we would. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. As you can tell, yes, I'm from Australia. My name's Sam Evans. I'm coming to you though from Bangkok in Thailand. You all know why. If you don't, if you're new to the channel, I'll put a link in the description that explains what's going on. For those of you who are new, we've done over 2,800 videos in less than two years since we started the channel. So make sure you subscribe if you want to get all the latest news, EV technology and battery technologies, and also what's going on with renewable energy. There's some incredible things happening. Richard Dennis has done the work. He's done the research, he's put them all together and worked out that there is 116 new coal, oil and gas projects in the pipeline in Australia. If they all proceed as planned, which they probably won't, but a lot of them will, an extra 1.4 billion tonnes of greenhouse gases will be released into the atmosphere annually by 2030. 1.4 billion tonnes annually by 2030. Those are extraordinary numbers. They are really bad numbers. Australia's total domestic greenhouse gas emissions last year in 21-22 were 490 million tonnes. So annual emissions from these new projects would be almost three times larger than Australia's 2021-2022 emissions. Three times larger. Just let your mind have a, have a think about that, how bad that actually is. That's the equivalent of starting up 215 new coal power stations based on the average emissions of Australia's current existing coal power stations. Now, the irony here is Australia plans on closing down all of our coal power stations by 2035. The United Nations is saying, is saying we must do it by 2030. That could even happen. So where's the coal going? I'll get to that in a second. The reason we can get away with this is the current global framework for emissions accounting only considers emissions generated in Australia. It won't be us that will be burning this stuff. It will be other countries. And almost all coal, almost all coal, oil and gas from these new projects will be exported. But of course, we share the atmosphere with everyone. I mean, we all have the same planet. So the consequences will affect everyone basically equally. Well, maybe not equally. I mean, if you live on a little island somewhere or a flat area that approaches the sea, it might affect you even worse than others. This week, the synthesis report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change called the IPCC described how fossil fuels are wreaking havoc on the planet. The science is clear, the IPCC says, fossil fuel use is overwhelmingly driving global warming. And, and of course, contributing to around about six million deaths per year from pollution. I think that's even worse. The sooner emissions are reduced this decade, the greater our chance of limiting warming to 1.5 or 2 degrees. Projected CO2 emissions from existing fossil fuel infrastructure, power plants, mines, pipelines, with that additional abatement exceed the remaining carbon budget for 1.5 degrees Celsius, the IPCC says, let alone new coal, oil and gas projects. And those are the worst. Now, I don't understand why anyone would be building new ones, considering the fact that renewable energy is cheaper. In my opinion, this is just ludicrous, ludicrously insane. But they are, unfortunately. In the words of UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, every country must be part of the solution. Demanding others move first only ensures humanity comes last. Guterres said, the acceleration agenda calls for a number of other actions. No new coal and phasing out of coal by 2030 in OECD countries, including Australia, and 2040 in all other countries. It has a range of other recommendations that we must do now to avoid a catastrophe. Most of those things we are, well, in fact, a lot of them we are doing, but unfortunately, a lot of them we're also not. New research released by the Australia Institute reveals the pollution from Australia's 116 new fossil fuel projects 
and government analysts estimate each project's start date and annual production figures. If they're correct, by 2030, the projects would produce 1,466 million tonnes of coal and 15,400 petajoules of gas and oil. You can, then, <clears throat> you can then calculate the emissions from all of those fossil fuels. Multiplying these enormous new fossil fuel volumes by their emissions factors gives you the answer to that equation. Renew Economy says when one ton of coal is burned, it releases approximately two. Th it re when one ton of coal is burned, it releases approximately 2.65 tons of carbon dioxide as its equivalent or its equivalent CO2e into the atmosphere and burning one terajoule of gas results in 51.5 tons of CO2 combined with the 164 million tons of emissions that the mining of these fuels would cause the result is a planet warming but spine chilling total of 4.8 billion tons by 2030. This amount is 24 times greater than the ambition of the federal government of Australia's key emissions reduction policy, the so-called safeguard mechanism. This aims to reduce emissions by 205 million tonnes over the same period. Now, technically, we could still achieve that plan, but fail in this area. And this area is clearly more relevant. Yes, Australia reducing CO2 emissions is very important. But if... If we reduce our own CO2 emissions, but we consequently increase the emissions of other countries, that would really be disingenuous in the extreme. Even though the rest of the world or much of the world is committed to burning less fossil fuels, there are more gas and coal mining project proposals in Australia today than there were in 2021. The Australian government, unfortunately, regardless of who's in power, continues to support unlimited growth in fossil fuel production and exports. That's despite clear statements from the United Nations, International Energy Agency, the IEA, and the IPCC that new fossil fuel projects are incompatible with global temperature goals. And I also think that in the long term, it's questionable whether a lot of these projects will even make their money back because the reality is, Renewable energy continues to decline in cost. It does. Solar continues to get cheaper. Solar panels are down 50% in price. Lithium batteries are down 20% this year. The cost of lithium itself is down 50%. All of these new technologies in combination with mass manufacture of those products means reducing prices. Renewable energy is already cheaper in most parts of the world. Why would companies continue to burn coal, gas, and gasoline or petrol when the alternatives are a much better option. I'm not convinced that Australia itself, all these companies starting all these 116 new projects, really have a good idea on what demand for those products that they'll be mining is in the future. They could end up losing billions of dollars. No matter where in the world Australian fossil fuels are burned though, they will turn up the heat. We can't escape the simple truth that humanity must stop burning fossil fuels. It's the only path to a livable future, says Renew Economy. Now, a lot of people say, yeah, but the poor still need, they, the poor people of the world, they still need gasoline, they need oil, they need coal, they need gas. Well, the poor in many cases, in fact, most cases, the extreme poor, are not connected to the grid. They benefit much more from cleaner air and less dependence on imports and also from having the ability to generate their own energy and not be dependent upon these big conglomerate fossil fuel companies who really just want to milk them dry and get as much profit as they can. Now, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.